What is the number one quality an athlete needs in a successful coaching partnership? Well, trust is the biggest thing overall. You've got to have trust between each other and uh, that doesn't happen day one. I guess that happens over time. Coaches often want self-responsible athletes. Why is uh, self-responsibility important and what does Sophie do to demonstrate this quality? Sophie's a master of that there. She, she should write a book on it actually. Um, been on time and not just on time, be prepared for every session you're doing or everything you're doing to do with her job, which her job is swimming and uh, now a professional athlete, she's very, very organised. And, and what do you think makes your coaching partnership with Sophie so successful? Time and trust again. We, we trust each other, um, which is, is so valuable and over the years have been together, we've been together about 10 years now, and obviously she was a young whippersnapper at the beginning, but she's a 19 year old going on 20 plus now, and um, we, we've grown all through. I've grown as a coach, and she's grown as an athlete, so um, yeah, I mean, we trust each other, big time. What are the positive ways an aspiring athlete can tackle a challenge they're having with their coach? Well, I, I guess not be afraid of the coach, so you know the person. So that's when I go back to the other two questions, trust. Um, you can actually say anything to the person, you're just so close. We often use it, um, and don't take this the wrong way, it's a bit like a marriage, and a very, very strong one. You've got to be able to say anything to each other to get value out of it. You cannot hold back and you can't wonder, otherwise it's like little white lie. So um, again, that, that big word, trust. And you, you say trust a lot. What are some ways that you, you build that trust, do you think? Time and also something I should have said in one of the other questions, when we go into a meet, when we're going through hard times doing the hard yards at home, we often hear the hard yards uh, built into it, but through those times where you're a long way out from an event and you're doing that hard day in, day out grind is, you know, you, you've got to be able to make it worthwhile, each session worthwhile. So um, it's very, very important. We, uh, there's no limelight. So when you're going into a race meet and times like that, it's two people in our case versus one. Now I know Sophie, she, she's a pro as you say, but if she could do one thing differently that would make her easier to coach, what would that be? That's bloody hard for me to answer because she's a very, very rounded person. As many people have probably seen her on the media and so forth, that's the soap. And um, one thing, what, what comes across, she's just a little bit too caring of people and she gets wound up in areas like that where small things affect her and um, that, that, that sort of gets her down stupid wee things rather than uh, just shrugging it off. You know, I'm pretty thick skin and can get on with things, but she, she, she's a lady and um, she takes things to heart a little. and. Um, I'm not talking about in, in, our, in our relationship in coaching, but more maybe outside of sport, which um, she is a human being after all, um, which can get you down and uh, can affect uh, your process and uh, building into the likes of a major event. What key message would you give a carded athlete to help them get the best out of their coach? Well, first of all, to become a carded athlete, you have to earn it. Uh, most people want money and want help, but they don't want to do the work. Uh, first of all, you've got to do the work and show that you, you can take it to that next level. And uh, there's many, many, many things to be there uh, uh, to, to answer that. And um, how will I put this? I'll put this, when, when, when things are getting hard, and you want to take time off, um, your little plaze, um, that is something where a carded athlete 
gets on with it. When when the hard gets hard, the athlete gets going. And um, you know that's the difference between being average and being good. And that's a carded athlete is the one being good. Probably similar uh, aspects can be applied to a carded coach like yourself. But uh, how's being a carded coach on the H? PSNZ coach performance program, uh, has that been valuable to you? Huge really because you know we come coaching every day and we coach at a, a, a lower level or a level you're at but when we're talking high performance I don't think anyone can uh, write that book high performance because high performance is X factor and that means doing things different to anyone else. If everyone did the same and followed what people wrote in books well, we'd have a lot of average athletes, but we want you know people with that special X factor. For me as a coach, same thing applies. And that is going to as many courses as you can, which think will give you value. And um, High Performance Sport New Zealand certainly um, give that to me. They've put a lot of time, spent a lot of money to, to get value out of it. And uh, I'm just coming up now, we're going into another four year block of training to give you an idea of it. And uh, these first two years, 13 and 14, are gonna be filling the top two inches up. Not, not, not to overload things, but to get a few different um, things. And then I'll be putting them into action 15 and 16 into Rio. So now is a very, very important time. And I'll be asking the high performance sport to back me on um, some things I need to do for that. What, what is the greatest impact on your coaching and being part of the HPSNZ Coach Performance Program? That's a hard one. I mean, you know, I've just said it, the donkey work is basically done in those early years, but boy, when you have done things like gone to the AIS in Australia, um, which to do special things because they've got the equipment we haven't in swimming um, do special things like that and then to be at the olympics beijing as one london as two and watch small things unfold as you're sitting in the stand and the things you've done two years before the olympics which they've had a big impact in and you're just watching it unfold and you sit back and you go, wow, it's quite a moving moment for a coach.